Welcome back to part two. As you can see, we're just in our general file, but if you've closed by then, you can always just hit file, new file and general. For this tutorial, I think we're gonna make an hourglass as it'll give us two different materials to work with and as well as equally hard shapes and equally smooth shapes. So before starting a project, let's go and actually see what an hourglass looks like. I'm just gonna use Chrome. You can use any kind of browser or even Pinterest is quite good just to get some reference photos. Better yet, if you actually have a model of an hourglass, then you can use that as a real life reference. We're kind of just gonna see, you know, what the shapes are. I'm thinking of doing something similar to this, just a simple hourglass with a wooden base on it. If you wanted to copy it exactly, you'd want to download the image and use it as a reference, but we're going to just use this as a very general guide. Other places you can also get references are stock photo websites like Pexels, which has tons of free stock photos. So I think let's start with the base. So we can delete our cube, just to click Shift A. All right, so whoopsie, let me make sure my key buttons are on the bottom left. There we go, just so you guys don't get lost. Another shortcut to prevent you from getting lost is clicking Spacebar. This opens up a search menu, and then you can search for anything in case you forget the shortcut. If Spacebar is not opening that, and it's rather opening up a play bar at the bottom, you go into edit, preferences, I think it's in navigation, no, it's in key mapping, and then over here where it says spacebar action, you're gonna to wanna to click that on search. Most likely it's default set to play. Once it's selected search, when you click the spacebar, it'll open up the search menu. Let's go ahead and add a cube file base. 200 centimeters is obviously way too big for base. So I think, let's say around 10 centimeters. Scale's not too important when you're working with one object, but general rule is to stick to a proper scale. That way when you import or transfer objects between different scenes, the scale is always correct. Now that that looks good, let's make it a little bit thinner. So let's go into X-ray mode, then click the tab button to go into edit mode and select all the bottom vertices. Now to look perfectly from the side, we go up to this little, I don't know, tripod or axis, hit the X, and now we can see it perfectly from the straight view. Once we've grabbed all the bottom ones, we're gonna hit G and then Z, and then just move it up. Maybe grab the ones G and then Z to move it down. Now that looks like a good base, but obviously that's a little bit too simple. So let's try and make it a little bit nicer. Once again, let's go into edit mode and now we're gonna hit the edge mode. And we're gonna select one. If you hold shift and click on another one, it'll save both. This is how you can select multiple things at once. Once again, hit shift and click and shift and click. Now we've got our four corners and let's add a bevel. So to add a bevel, you're gonna hit control B and you'll see a line appear. The more you move the line, the more your bevel will be. The further away, the smaller the bevel will be. If you scroll your mouse button, you'll have multiple increments of your bevel. So if you wanted to round corners, you want to bevel it quite a bit. So for the time being, I'm just gonna have flat corners, but once again, it's preference. And yep, that looks about good enough for me. Now let's go into the face mode. Actually, yeah, let's go to the face mode and select the top and then go back into the line mode. And now this will automatically select all the outlines. It's quite useful when you have more lines than faces because clicking one face is going to be way quicker than slowly selecting each edge. Let's hit control B again to bevel. If your bevels aren't working right or they're going a bit skew, what you can always do is before beveling, select the shape click Control A and then apply all transformations. Sometimes if scale or location or rotation isn't applied, the bevel can be a bit messed up. There we go. But I'm liking that shape so long. Let's go back to edit mode, select the bottom face. And now if you hit I, it's gonna intrude or insert and make a smaller shape. Let's hit there. 
then hit G, Z, and drag it down. There we go. This is looking like quite an interesting shape. Let's move it up a bit just so it's above the lines. There we go. Another useful thing with the I function is if you select multiple faces, like so, and then hit I, it's kind of now just dragging them all down. But if you wanted them to individually scale down, you hit I again, and now you see they're all individually scaling down on their own face. Let's see that, click I, and then done. The next function we're gonna use is an extrude one. I'll quickly demonstrate it on a cube before we use it on our shape. So if I shift add a cube, let's just move it to the side, go into edit mode and select all the ones. When you hit E, it extrudes it. So it pulls it out while keeping the original shapes where they are. So if we hit E, it pulls it out and it automatically makes faces and edges for us. This is super useful when you want a repeating elements or you want to make sure you keep the dimensions the same. So let's just control Z all of that and go back. If yours aren't already automatically selected, you can just use the face tool to quickly select them. So let's hit E once, as you can see it's extruding it. Then if we hit right click, it's gonna go back to its original place, but the vertices are still there. So then let's scale them down by hitting S and then if you hit shift Z, it's not gonna move along the S or the Z axis. And we just pull it down. So once again, shift Z, and then we just pull it down and this is gonna make it insert. When scaling anything, you hit S, scale, but if you only wanna scale it in a certain axis, you hit the way you wanna scale it. So let's only scale it in Y. We hit Y, and now it's only gonna get larger or smaller on the Y axis. If you want to scale it for everything except Y, you would hit Shift Y, or after hitting scale, Shift Y, and now you see it's only scaling on the Z and X axis. Quite useful, definitely has a time and place to be used, but it's once again a very handy tool. So far I'm liking this shape. It doesn't have to really be too complex for the first thing. So I think the last thing we can do is just add a little insert to the top by hitting I, moving it in, then hitting E to extrude it, and then let's just pull it down. If it's not going directly down, you're just gonna to wanna to hit Z to make sure you're working on the Z axis. So there we go. We can pull it down all the way to there. That's looking quite good. Then if we hit on the line tool, another way to select them, in case you didn't have them all selected, is click off them. And if you hit Alt and then left click, it'll select all the lines around. Same as loops, Alt, left click. Sometimes it doesn't work, you see there, because it doesn't know which line to follow. But for normally loops or squares, it'll know which one to follow. There you see, automatically selected it. It's especially useful when working on cylinders. So if I add a cylinder, as you can see, there's tons of lines here. So to select all of them by shift clicking is going to take forever. But if I just hit Alt, right click, it selects all of them. Let's see, just control Z all of that. So let's go. Alt, right click or left click, sorry. Control B to bevel and let's pull it up. I'm now gonna roll my mouse wheel to make it a smooth bevel. There we go. But now as you can see, there's all these little bumps. So it's not really smooth. It kind of looks geometric. So to fix that, you go into edit Make sure you have all of the faces selected. Right click, and then go all the way down here where it should say, ooh, whoopsie, forgot. We should first be selected on the face mode. Right click, go all the way down to shade smooth. Now, as you can see, those edges are perfectly smooth. And I think, you know, that's how the shape's looking. Maybe play around with it, maybe try and make it again. Maybe try and make it a little bit different, but for you know your first good modeling, the amount of well tools you've learned here are really useful, and you can definitely use them in other models. For the next video, we'll start with the glass for the hourglass, and this will be better.
for smoother objects or more naturally looking objects. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.